Okay, hi. Uh, welcome to the FX Street seminar or webinar. Uh, my name is Ian Coleman. I'm going to be your host uh, for the next hour. Just give you a bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm one of the traders and analysts at uh, firstoftrading.com. Uh, we are a analytical uh, service provider who um, basically supply uh, FX trade recommendations onto our platform by 7 a.m. UK time on a daily basis. Um, I've just got in front of in front of me just a, an example of the platform. It's actually today's live platform. Okay, just to show you uh, what we do. Uh, you can see here we go down to the majors. Um, let's take .em for instance. Okay, you can click on the report. Takes you through to the daily report um, with a chart, the analysis, um, and the stop uh, and support levels. Oh, sorry, I should say target and, uh, and support levels on this uh, on this trade. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about our platform uh, or our company. Uh, we do offer a £25 discounted one month free trial at the moment if anybody wants to try us out. Um, what we are going to do today is talk about long term forecasts for most of the major currencies and some of the crosses uh, going into the next sort of couple of weeks and couple of months. Um, basically, I used to write a blog on FX Street going back some years now, probably three or four years, and it was called Time Frame Breakdowns. Uh, and there we would pick a currency pair, a daily currency pair, and basically break it down from a sort of monthly chart to a weekly chart into a daily four hour and hourly chart to get a bias or, or to try and develop a, a trade. So what I always do uh, in my analysis I am always looking at the bigger picture. So I'm looking at the bigger picture and I'm trying to break it down into shorter time frames uh, to generate uh, trade recommendations. Um, I'm not a scout trader. Um, I, I do look down to five minute charts uh, in my personal trading account to get uh, decent entries uh, and exit levels. Uh, but my analysis or the analysis that we provide is on a on a more of a, an hourly basis or an intraday basis than to, than to actually scout the, uh, the market. What we're looking for in general are moves of between sort of 40 or 50 points in the major currency pairs to our first target level with hopefully stops of sort of uh, 20 to 30 points. Okay, let's just put up my charts. Um, Please do feel free. I hope, can you guys see that? Because last time we actually um, did a webinar with the CQG chart, so there were some problems with the actual chart loading. Let's see if we can get that going again. Can everybody see that okay? Thank you. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, it gets quite boring. Well, not boring. Sometimes you, you you find that you you feel that you're talking to yourself for 55 minutes if nobody interacts. Uh, so I want to make sure that if you if you've got any questions to ask, uh, if there's anything that you that you want to query, if you disagree with the analysis, if you see something different than I see, uh, then as I said, please interact. Uh, it makes it far more enjoyable for myself if not uh, it's not yourself. Um, Okay, we're going to break down the currency pairs. I've actually got Euro Yen on here at the moment, but we'll get down to the majors first. Okay, Euro Dollar. Now, it might look a mess, and a lot of people get sort of phased out by um, looking at some of the charts uh, that I have on my analytical pages. These aren't the pages that we that we post onto the website. Uh, they're more Simplistic. This is actually um, basically my settings. So on here I've got an RSI uh, with a 15 uh, setting. Um, I've got um, a nice little tool on here called Candle Formations, or 
basically inform me if there's any relevant cannon can formations. Uh, I've got my EMAs and I've got the uh, I've got the Ishimoku cloud or Ishimoku cloud. Um, and from this, I don't I don't overcomplicate things. I don't put parabolic czar on. I don't put pivot points on. Um, I'm looking for trend. I'm looking for bias. I'm looking for pullbacks, and for that, I'm using FID levels, chart formations, etc., um, to try and get a short-term and a long-term bias. So here, obviously, hold on one sec. Hi, Ian. No, I don't really look at um, gaps. Are great for. Um, stock indices because um, the market does have a tendency to close gaps uh, on a daily basis as it did today in the DAX um, but I don't really give them that much relevance um, on, a, on a Monday morning um, I write my weekend analysis on a Saturday uh, and I don't look at it again until 6 o'clock on a Monday morning um, because of a lot of the indicators that I use are um, moving averages, so I need 15 hours worth of data because uh, my main um, moving average is my 15 EMA. Uh, I'm very wary of the, of the Monday morning open um, and I prefer to let the market settle down. That's one of the reasons why we give out a weekly analysis uh, on, a, on a Saturday or a Sunday. We don't do daily analysis on a Monday, we do daily analysis from Tuesday to Friday. We basically find that the market can be quite erratic especially first thing on a Monday morning. Um, so no is the answer, sorry. I don't take any uh, any notice of the weekend gaps. Um, so a decent move down. Let's just go on to an even larger time frame. Okay, this is the monthly uh, euro dollar. Now obviously, fundamentally, everybody's worried about Greece at the moment, about what's going to happen, whether or not they're going to bail. Um, whether or not they're going to be forced out. Um, whatever the outcome, I'm 80% technical and 20% fundamental. I can see the market um, pushing up euro dollar, even if Greece does end up falling out. I think they'll actually take this as a, as a, as a plus for the euro, not, not a negative. I can also see uh, stock indices uh, coming lower. So. A few of you might who understand correlation might be sitting there thinking, well, how can stock indices go lower and euro dollar go up? You've obviously got the dollar bias there, or the, or the dollar correlation is not going to work. But these correlations do sometimes disjoint, and I think that's what's going to happen. I can I can see um, a conflict of interest or a conflict in views um, between stock indices and the euro dollar at the moment. So anyway, monthly. Um, I think this is a correction, okay? I think this is a, a large consolidating pendant or flag formation or channel, whatever you want to call it. But I think it has got the bias to break to the upside. So this whole move down, not this whole move down, but I was wary of trying to find uh, a pattern for a reversal, okay, and this is off the monthly chart. Ignore those because this is these are just fib levels that we'll get down to when we when we get into shorter time frames. Okay, so just changing it to the weekly. So here we've got a morning star formation, okay, which is a fantastic reversal pattern. Okay, reversal patterns want to be seen at the highs and lows of trends. So here we've got an engulfing uh, bullish. Here we've got an engulfing bearish, here we've got an engulfing bearish, and here a uh, morning star formation. When you see these inside bars, I could just zoom in a bit. Okay, here we've got inside bars. All they show is investor indecision. Okay, the market is trading sideways or consolidating. If you actually drill that down into shorter time frames, like a four hour or an hourly chart, that would actually just be a consolidating triangle. Uh, symmetrical triangle. You can see the charts are not the cursor. Is that correct? Let me see if I can get uh, crosshairs on here. Just bear with me. Okay. 
We've got crosshairs on here now, so if it does drop off again, um, we should be okay. So here's the engulfing candles, okay, moves down, and then you get these insider armies. This is the one I was talking about. So we've got this consolidation. If you zoomed in there um, and looked in a shorter time frames, that would just be a symmetrical triangle uh, pattern. And a symmetrical triangle pattern, after a move down, has a bias to break to the downside. So we move lower, again inside pattern, shows investor indecision, we move lower, morning star formation, and this is really the one that we wanted to be concentrating on. Since we've made the low, uh, and I did post in, I've got a blog on the uh, FX Street, uh, or FX Street net site, uh, we, I think we called 12, 12,600 the low in, um, in Euro dollar, and I think it was 12,620. Is actually the base. So then we informed, we, we formed this morning star formation. Okay, and we've pushed up. So where to now? Because that's all the history lesson. Okay, well, we pushed up to the previous high. The previous highs, previous lows, act as areas of support and resistance. Somebody just asking, what time does London, what time does Forex start in London? Forex for is 24 hours, obviously. Um, we consider the market open to be at 7 a.m. UK time uh, because that's what time the European indices open. Um, and it can sometimes set the tone for the day. Um, our analysis, we want to we, we want to make sure that our analysis is sent out at, on a, in a timely manner. Uh, so all our analysis is ready. I start writing the analysis at half past three in the morning, by the way, um, covering some of the uh, more obscure uh, crosses. Um, by the time I get to half past six, I've posted 12 currency pairs with charts. Um, they're not always direct calls to action. Sometimes they will be a uh, bullish bias, bearish bias, look to buy dips, look to sell rallies. Okay, And then we'll update the platform uh, as the day progresses. Um, Well, interbank bank traders start at 7 a.m. Um, when I was a broker, we had to be in, in at, and sat at, sat at our desk by half past six, uh, ready to service the banks at seven o'clock. Um, that was on the Swiss francs. I mean, if you look at a, a, a yen trader, uh, a yen trader can start at any time from five o'clock in the morning. Um, so it, it varies, but as a rule, uh, 7 a.m. UK. Um, what's my track of four? Um, so here, okay, we move up to uh, a previous high. Now, at that point, we hit the cloud and we started moving sideways, okay. But the whole sequence here looks corrective, okay. We're not aggressive. We're shooting inside bars. We're in between the two moving averages, okay. We've got inside candles which are showing uh, indecision. And we're spiking as well, spiking to the downside. So if we put a channel on here, and I'm just going over this because obviously I'm not just going to forecast on where I, want, where I think it's going to go. I want you to understand what analysis or what made me believe that they were going to go to these levels they are sitting at, at the moment. Okay, and just for your information, we called euro dollar higher this morning, sterling dollar higher, dollar yen higher, euro yen higher, Aussie yen higher. Um, so that's quite a good day. Um, Ian, I know you want to bro. Any advice on broker selection? Are well, the main ones generally fair and above board? Um, I'm uh, I'm not that sort of broker. Uh, you're talking about retail foreign exchange. I used to talk to banks um, such as UBS, Barclays, uh, RBS. Uh, I gave bank advice, not uh, not not brokers. So I, I couldn't say use IG Index or uh, any of those guys. To be fair, my personal account, if I'm allowed to promote, promote them, has always been with IG Index because I've always found the platform reliable. Um, execution's pretty good. Spreads aren't bad. So so sorry, I'm just making this chart a bit bigger. That's too big. I don't like it like that. So here we've got the previous high, okay. 
I think that my chart is on my full screen, so I don't know if it's a problem on your side there, David. Um, the trend channel. So we take a high, take it from the high, and then bring it down to support. Okay. Don't worry too much about the spikes here. I'm going to get rid of this cursor as well because it's driving me mad. I think you can all see now. Um, so we've got it down to support level. So this is the high. This is the support level. Okay. And note how we come that back. We test and then we test again. And then you can see this thick trend line that I've put across here. Okay. What normally happens is when we get these areas of consolidation, we draw a trend line from the top. What will happen is it will burst out and then it will come back to retest. And that's basically what we've done today. So we've had a head and shoulders formation. So this is the head. This is the left shoulder. This is the right shoulder. We've had a breakout. And we've had a retest back inside. Where is the bias? Okay. The bias is obviously to the upside. RSI is above 50. Okay, we've had a breakout, yes, only it's come back to retest inside. We're inside the cloud, so as far as Ishimoto is concerned, this is non-trending at the moment. But a morning star formation on a weekly chart, if we go back to the weekly, we also had five waves down. Okay, we've had a head and shoulders breakout. We've had a retest of a trend line. Let's go break it down a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit too much. It really does look like madness. Get the four hour chart on. Okay, I don't want to confuse anybody too much. Okay, so this was that retest. Okay, this, these spikes lower for the retest. Notice the chart formations that we get off here. Okay, this engulfs. 12 hours worth of previous trading, okay? So a large bullish candle goes up to form this descending trend line. Now, worst case scenario, that is a channel, okay? Because it's not aggressive. It's not aggressively pushing lower, okay? It's just testing, testing, testing. Then we get this morning star formation. Notice it's at the bottom of the cloud, and this was our trend channel, if you remember, on the daily chart. So we come down, we literally hit it, pit perfect. We then form a morning star formation, which is a bullish reversal formation. Okay, and then we move up. Okay, what happens when we break out? And by the way, on Friday we recommended a sell trade. And I'm not sort of just going into over promotion of our service, but it's years of analytical experience that, that, that goes into um into our analysis. We don't just, um, you know, it's going up, we're looking at buying it, it's going down, we're looking at selling it. It's, it's, it's an in-depth uh, analytical report. That Why did we call a, a sell on Friday? Why? Because we had a decent pattern up. And to show you that, to the extension, so off the bullish morning star formation, okay, we take off the extension. And when you're using FIB extensions, don't worry too much about 161.8%. Uh, you know, I have to see a, a pullback at 161.8%, otherwise it's not a correct Elliott wave, etc. Yes, um, I do look at Elliott wave, but I don't look at Elliott wave for exact chart formations. I look at Elliott wave because I want to look at impulse and reversal sequences. Okay, sometimes as it, this is this is the case on a breakout it will just ignore 161.8 percent and just rally up to 261 uh, 261.8 so here this was 161.8 after the breakout and the breakout line was 131.94 okay so it just pushes straight up 261.8 percent forms an inside army candle which is just show of investor indecision and then back down to this uh, this trend support. Um, let's get rid of that again. So, impulsive, corrective in free. Fib retracement level. I'm not saying just use fibs all the time, but they are a good guide. So, this was our impulse move up. This was a three-wave pattern. Back to the support line. 
move back up, then a move back to the support line, a spike below, which often, often happens to, to shake out the, the dead wood, okay, and then 161.8%. So 161.8%, um, let's see, excuse me. Oh, wait. Uh, was at 130.139 this morning, okay. Actually, I had to stop it at 131.25, so we were lucky not to get uh, to get hit on that this morning. The low was actually 131.28. Okay, so the free wave correction lower. The bias, everything here leads to uh, more bullish moves up in euro dollar. Okay, if we break it just down very quickly and then we'll get onto the other currency pairs. We've got morning star formation, we've got a channel. We've had a channel breakout, okay, we've had five waves down. Notice when I'm saying about Elliott wave, these cross over. So this first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, this crosses over. So if you were a diehard Elliott wave analyst or trader, you, you'd you ignore that because it's, it's invalidated the count. I'm not, okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. I at least want to see a three wave move up. Um, Target levels, well if you take this low, which is 126.24, and you take the breakout level, which is about 132.23, excuse me, you've got 600 pips to go, okay? So from the breakout level, which is about Here, okay, 136, uh, 138.50 ish, give or take. If you go back to the weekly chart, where is 138.50? Now, it's bang on cloud resistance, okay, because by the time it moves up, okay, it's going to filter up to around this sort of level, 138, 10, 139, okay, so that is. My forecast um, for euro dollar. I think we're higher. I think we might even spike through. I think you might even get to this sort of level. And if we don't get to this sort of level, then I'd expect to see sorry. with my tools. I expect to see something like that. So a move up, then a pullback, and then uh, an aggressive breakout. Okay. So I'm bullish towards 138 the figure. Any questions on um, Euro dollar? And then we'll quickly have a look at Euro yen and then go on to the other um, majors. No, great. This. Tell me if you can see this chart as well when I click through because sometimes, as I said before, the charts, sometimes I need to reload this, this camera. Everybody okay with that? Everybody can see that? Uh, time frame to move up. It could be impulsive. In two weeks, um, I'd say a maximum of six weeks. I don't really look at, 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 at time frames. I look at time frames in charts, but I don't look at how long it's going to take to, uh, to to get anywhere really. Okay, so to confirm that bias that we had, okay, we've got obviously got to look at correlation. So if we if we're bullish in euro dollar or if I'm bullish in euro dollar, then I have to look at Euro yen, am I bullish in Euro yen? Am I bullish in Euro sterling? I am bullish in Euro Aussie. Um, so you get this correlation with, within the different currency pairs. Okay. <clears throat> so I want to look at Euro dollar. I want to see, sorry, Euro yen. I want to see reasons why I'd expect a pullback, uh, which we had uh, yesterday and uh, the latter part of last week. 
Um, and then I want it, I also want confirmation why I should still keep on going at this bullish trend. So if I go into a weekly, okay, so I'm going to put an extension on here. Again, don't worry too much about 161.8%. We've got one, two, three, four, an overshoot. Okay, and strong trends, it can quite easily move past 161.8%. So this is 161.8, uh, which was around 106.95. Okay, three wave move back up, spikes uh, up into uh, resistance and then moves down. What do we have at the base at 261.8%? We have a morning star formation. Cannot be ignored. It is very strong. It's not, it's not just strong at the base of a trend, but it's strong at the base of a trend. Sorry. Is that better? Um, it's strong at the base of a trend with 261.8%. So it really, it really can't be ignored. Okay, so let's just remove that fib off there and get down to shorter time frames again. And then we get down onto a, our daily. Now here, I had a trend line off here or a check trend channel. So I was expecting a pullback. But I was only expecting a pullback into this sort of level, um, which didn't it, it push through 10063. But I'll just move this one again, just so we can see a bit better. Okay, so head and shoulders. So we've got the star formation. It pushes up, okay, up towards the previous high. Push then pushes lower again through the base, okay, through the right shoulder where it should have. Uh, Paused. I mean, it, it did pause, but it didn't. It didn't hold. Okay, and then a push up. If we put a fib retracement on here, okay, the spike through is between 50 and 61.8 percent. So it's still giving a good indication of a move higher. Okay, impulsive, corrective, impulsive. Again, we get the breakout. Now, after the breakout, what do we get? We get an inside candle. Okay, this is an inside Arami candle, the red candle. It shows investor indecision. But what happens with most breakouts, including triangle breakouts, head and shoulders breakouts, wedge breakouts in particular, the market will, will come back to retest. Okay, the market will come back to retest the breakout line. Uh, and we'll see this in, in, in numerous occasions. So we get the push up and then the market comes back. And what did it do this morning? It spiked through the support level. Okay, the support level was around 10200. If we take that back to shorter time frames. Okay, how did it form that pullback? It formed it in three waves. Three waves of corrective. So we get this pullback in three waves. This is our trend line support. We get an insider army candle, which basically dictates investor indecision, as we've said before, at areas of support resistance, not just in the middle of a trend. Okay, we want to be seeing it at places where we want to see it. Okay, where we had previous resistance should now be support at fib levels, at extension levels. Okay, not just in the middle of a trend where you, you don't have any inclination or clue about why it should be pausing there. You know, if, if you see a candle and you, you are bullish or bearish in that pair, try and find out why it's stopping there. Look for a reverse trend line or support and resistance. But don't just mindlessly buy it because it's, um, because it's showing investor indecision, because indecision can go either way. Um, so we get this, this, uh, Inside candle, okay, this was the buy trade this morning and actually took profit just off this top trend line. Um, I do think it breaks to the upside. Yeah, I think, um, sorry David, I think that's on your uh, side, not on, not on my side. Um, 
I think there's a, a tab as one of the guys that if you if you read back to one of the guys earlier was saying that you have to press something else. Uh, guys, click top left fourth icon for sizing. There you go. Um, so the bias is to the upside. Okay. Just look how these waves form as well. Okay. It, it, it's erratic, but one, two, impulsive, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. If you look at Elliott Wave or you look at um, corrective sequences, okay, it will dictate that they're in five and three, okay. Normally it's five, three, five, uh, but C wave, so this is A, A, B, C, D, okay, so C to D wave uh, can be three or five waves. Uh, I hope this isn't all too much to take in because I do feel that I'm sort of bombarding you with um, technical analysis as well as predictions. Um, so here we've got 102.35, here we've got 97.03, so 102.35 minus 3703. I have got other chart packages that actually do this automatically, but on this one they don't. Okay, this is a break and retest. So 10202. Okay. Damn. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, the 99 was 107 the figure. Okay. So you're going to be looking. at potential target level of up here, okay? Again, there's no real reason why you'd want to sell this, this this cross. Okay, the only thing that I can see potentially is A, B, C. But with the bias on the, in the other, um, in the euro dollar, uh, with my bias in, in dollar yen, I, I can't really see uh, Euro again pushing pushing down from these these levels. Um, if we go back into the weekly, okay. And by the way, I, I hadn't planned that. Okay, a previous air, area of support becomes an area of resistance. Is there any reason whatsoever why you wouldn't want to take that long trade uh, up towards 107? The figure. And when it gets there, don't outstay your welcome. Okay. Um, so that's euro yen. So we've got bullish euro dollar. Um, we've got bullish euro yen. Let's have a look at something else. Just very quickly do dollar yen. I'll just refresh this camera just in case. I'm not telling you, Bucky. You asked me three times. <laughs> the magic numbers. I can tell you most of the stuff I know, but I'm not telling you everything. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm digressing a little bit there. Dolly in, dolly in, dolly in, dolly in. Um, this is three waves. Okay, I'm I'm boldly picking the base here. Okay, there is a morning star formation in here. This was intervention. You've always got to be careful of intervention, but I can see a line in the sand around this sort of level, um, around 76 a figure. And I don't think, even if the market tries to push it any lower, um, that um, the Bank of Japan will let it push through there. Also, this last move up has been without intervention. Um, which makes the move stronger, more more resilient. Um, so we've got a morning star formation. We had choppy trading. Okay. If we go down onto a daily chart, again, the writings of a madman. Um, all sorts of chart formations in here. Um, this. Could be you have to give this formation 
a bit of, you have to take it with a bit of pinch of salt because it's intervention, okay? Okay, I know technical analysis, technical analysis, but is is a forced uh, move on, on the market. This isn't, okay? This is a, an expanding wedge formation, which is a continuation pattern. It has a, a bias to break uh, to the upside. Okay, we had trend line support here. Um, we had an inside daily candle on the 2nd of February, and we've been bullish since, okay? Decent move up. Consolidation, the reason why we got a little bit of consolidation was just because we hit this area of confluence, okay? And it was a previous area of resistance. We moved back into the cloud. And now today, uh, we formed a very nice um, engulfing pattern. Obviously, the next area of resistance is here, which is 70, uh, 78.29. A break of there okay and we're looking towards the, the top of the cloud which is here it's going to move in previous high around 79.52 um, so we've got this correlation we've got correlation between dollar yen uh, euro dollar so we have to be bullish or I have to be bullish in Euro Yen, otherwise I've got something wrong. Okay. Um, any questions on that pair? No, great. No, in fact, it's worse in the Yen pairs. Um, strange it in all Yen pairs. No, the, the, the worst the worst pair to look at uh, Ishimoto on is dollar Yen, believe it or not. Um, the the other the other pairs, the other crosses, the end crosses are quite good with Ishimoto. Um, but are they better in, in the end pairs than, than others? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I like um, cloud formations in, uh, in commodity pairs in particular. Um, but I look at them on everything, uh, including stock indices. Um, you know, commodities, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at quickly at that uh, euro sterling. Now everybody thinks it's a bit boring because it doesn't. Numbers are small, only get like 20 pip move a day. You know, if you think that's the case, then just trade a little bit lumpier. Um, so. I said I've got bias for Euro going up. I've still got a bias for this cross uh, to move higher. Let's just move that out of the way. Okay. What's happened here? This is just consolidation. Again, as far as I'm concerned. Desperately trying to build long positions. Um, I think it's a flag. I think it breaks to the upside. We're inside the cloud at the moment on the monthly, uh, which basically, as we said before, normally dictates no trend. If, if you're a die-hard cloud trader, and I'd never advise anybody to be a die-hard anything trader, um, you want to get a breadth uh, of, of market knowledge behind you and then use all these different technical and analytical skills to produce trades. What you don't obviously want to do is have so much stuff that you that you say, right, that's the line up, that's the line up, that's the line up. You know, six or seven different things that have to line up before you buy a trade or or, 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 or take a trade, I should say. Uh, but if you do that, you're going to get paralysis and you're, you're just not going to be, well, you're going to get in far too late. Uh, all I'd say is that do try and get as much knowledge as, as possible which is obviously why you're here today. Um, Ishimoto cloud, if it breaks into the cloud from the upside, from the top side, so here it's broken in from the top side, the bias, unless it breaks and clears the base, is still to move to the top side, okay? With the bottom, 
acting as support. So monthly, yeah, we've had this aggressive move down. That is actually an engulfing pattern off the top as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think we now move move back up um, weekly. I think this is a three-way corrective pattern. One, two, three. Okay. I think worst case scenario, she pulls back towards 38.2%, which is at 84.54. Uh, if I remember right, that's 23.6. Taken it off the wrong um, trend. Sorry, hold on one sec. 84.73. They're great charts. They just don't like this software, do they? Um, so I'm bullish. I'm bullish in euro sterling. Bullish too. I want to see 84.60 broken. And if I see 84.60 broken, then I'm going to be looking up to this sort of level, uh, around 85.50. Uh, sterling dollar. Okay. Bought this this morning, literally off the FIB level. Okay, off this 161.8% FIB. Um, Monthly is a consolidating triangle formation. Now, consolidating triangle formation, sorry, do I need to refresh that again? Back on there. Okay, uh, consolidating triangle formation has a bias to break to the downside. It's a bias, I don't think she does, I think she breaks higher. Um, if you notice last month, move her over a bit, we had an engulfing monthly pattern. Okay. They are called AMRs. They're not to be ignored. Acute monthly reversal pattern. Okay. Um, it gives it a bias to the upside. So even though we've got this symmetrical triangle formation, that has a bias to break lower. I think long term, or short term even, I'm not trying to fiddle it. Um, I think we're up. Okay, I think we're bullish. Short time frames. Let's just get rid of that for a sec. Can everybody still see it? Or do I need to refresh again? Can you still see the charts, guys and girls? Yeah, great. Um, so here, We've moved up. Um, we've got a correction, but this this is impulsive. Okay, there's a lot to be again. I'm not promoting other people's chart packages, but pro real time charts and a few of the others they have an indicator on there uh, that will let you um, uh, see the strength of the trend. Okay, so you basically put your trend line across the bottom. Or, or on the on the trend up, and it will say like 78 percent, 76 percent deep. If you can't see it visually, um, you can put that on, and it will. You, from that, you can then decide whether or not that trend is impulsive or corrective. Okay, anything under 30 percent or 35 percent, I'll say is corrective. Anything over 35 percent is is impulsive. Um, so this move up is without a shadow of a doubt impulsive. Okay, and the move down, I expect to be corrective. Don't like it when it goes like that. That's better. Okay. Head and shoulders formation. Can we see one? I think we're sort of pushing our luck if we're trying to find one. But again, it's sort of curve fitting, isn't it? Trying to make the chart do what we want it to do as opposed to what it's actually telling us. So inside our army candle. That gave us a, a weekly bullish engulfing. We then moved back up. We broke out of the cloud formation. What happens in most breakouts, including cloud formation, book cloud formation, we come back to retest. Okay. Daily signals. We had something like 13 days with higher higher lows here. Um, massively overstretched. Engulfing candle off the top, and then she's come back inside. Has she got more room to go? Yes, potentially. 
um, if you looked at that, that um, which month was it in reversal candle? Last month. Um, so we get this move lower. Sorry, has it got more room to go? Well, it has. 156.41. If we're looking at this channel, is the potential for the downside. So 156.41. Um, what have we got here? Lower highs. Okay. Shows that the market is trying to push up, and every time it's getting rejected. Break it down in short time frames. Let's just put the 240 on here actually. Okay, so this is that channel base. Nice divergence off the top by the way. Okay, so the chart makes higher high. Oscillators make a lower high. That basically happens because um you can use it. It's really for, for higher time frames, to be perfectly honest. But I sometimes use it down into a five minute chart just to show support resistance. Um, and just for my peace of mind, so that I sort of know that I'm not jumping on a trend too, too soon. Um, so here, we just put the fib on again. Okay. We got 161.8% this morning. Now, is this a, a wonky three ways correction? Or is it five, three, five then in a big, in a larger corrective way? Um, at the moment, I don't know. I know that I've got an engulfing candle, uh, which we took a buy trade off this morning. Didn't outstay our welcome. Um, The first profit target was 158.40, um, and it's starting now to move quite aggressively lower. Um, so this could potentially just be a corrective wave. My long-term bias is still to the upside. Okay, I'm taking note of that that monthly engulfing candle, but do I want to be buying into this? Well, short time frames are telling me I should be selling. Okay, we're underneath the power formation. We've got an inside bar here. This is a confirming bar afterwards. It actually confirms as it breaks through the base of the other bar. So short-term bias is looking more to the downside uh, than the upside. So short-term bear, uh, long-term bull in, uh, in cable. Uh, somebody asked about Aussie dollar earlier. So we'll just wrap it up with that one. This is a monthly chart. Inside candle off the base, believe it or not. Hope you can all still see this again. Okay, it moved up. Now, what do we know about commodity pairs and fib levels? Most other currency pairs will stick to 261.8%. Commodity pairs have a tendency to push through to 425 or it's actually 423%. Um, which is up here, but I can see five waves. I can see one, two, three, four, five. I can see this wave, one, two, three, four, five. So, and I can also see this wave in three. Okay, so I've got impulsive, corrective, impulse. So I'm wary, sorry, about this being towards the top. Uh, for Aussie dollar and also all the pundits at the moment on Bloomberg, CNBC are all saying well there's only one trade you know you've got to um, you've got to sell Euro Aussie because the Aussie is going to go through the roof and Euro is going to tank I am a buyer in Euro Aussie especially uh, in the short to medium term for the next probably two weeks um, I always think when it gets to the point where they're talking about it in the press, it's the, normally the point to go the other way around. Okay, here, um, choppy. 
Okay, if it's a corrective sequence, one, two, three, one, two, is this wave three? Or do we push all the way up in wave five? I don't think we do because we've started this, this move lower. Okay, so we've had one, two, three. Uh, that isn't the best engulfing kettle in the world. But if you look at our weekly chart now, you'll see I've got a fib on there. Okay, that's 161.8%. Now, Sorry, is that better? Okay, now, so we've got this move back down, and then we've got this move up. Now, I'm just going to take that fib off for a minute, and I've not actually, if that's 78.6%, then we've got the potential of quite a nice formation coming in there which would be a bearish Gartley on a weekly chart. So what we do, so we put on our reversal pattern. Okay, that's 61.8%. This is 78.6 here. Okay, 107.24. We've hit it a few times, so it is an area of resistance. Okay, we have made a higher high. So this potentially could be um, leg. Um, boom, 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 boom. This could be leg X, A, A, B, B, C, C, D. Um, I was actually calling it bearish for another reason. So I've got that monthly view. I've now got this weekly view, potentially. Let's go down into dailies again. Okay. What I don't like about having a bullish view in here, and I'm just going to refresh again, just in case it's gone, um, is this, okay? Strong move up, strong move down. This isn't an impulsive third wave, okay? In anybody's world, that is corrective. These are impulsive, okay? That is corrective. So, when I'm putting on my extension levels, Okay, it's exactly 161.8%. I know, well, at least I think I know, that the worst case scenario I'm going to get here is a three wave correction. Okay, because if this is just a fourth wave correction, then I'm still to achieve leg C. Um, however, I think this is a bigger move lower. Um, and again, this isn't textbook, and sometimes they're not. I think that's what we have, which is a bearish butterfly formation. And if that is correct, then the bias is severely down, and it's at least to around sort of 102 the figure, uh, which again is 500 points. So if I've got a bearish bias, even if it's short term on Aussie dollar, and I've got a bullish bias on Euro, uh, dollar, then I have to be bullish in Euro, was it? Um, otherwise, I'm getting some of my analysis wrong. The only thing that skews this slightly is because if it's a perfect formation, then she should reach 127%, which is here. Okay, so, and that would obviously overextend this 161.8. So, Mole bearish bias, but I really got to get underneath sort of 106.70 to confirm. And then I move back down. And I'm just really, very quickly, I'm going to show you Euro Aussie. Uh, why I should be bearish on Euro Aussie. Let's get rid of all this muck down the bottom. We can talk about that in a sec. Okay, this is wave one. In fact, it's not. This is wave one. So one, two, strong downtrend to, to, to four, okay, to three, four. Okay, so one, two, strong downtrend, 161.8%, okay. <clears throat> what happens here? You get at least a three-wave correction. 
Okay, actually bought it last week off this engulfing candle at the base. So we had an insider army candle showing investor indecision, as we've talked about. We then got this bullish candle, okay, engulfed. So it went, went through, spiked the base, then engulfed, then moved higher, okay. There's potential here. There's potential for a head and shoulders formation, left shoulder, neck, right shoulder, which will give us a bias up towards this sort of flag. Uh, up towards this, uh, this cloud. Um, if we break it down into shorter time frames, we use 240. Okay. Change channel. I think I'm taking this too early. Okay. It could potentially move down towards here, which should, there's actually a, an inside fib count here, which could di dictate that she gets down towards sort of 122, 38. Um, but then one, two, and I'd expect uh, the third wave up to be quite aggressive. Just to show that on short time frames. Chopping around in here as well today. I'm not sure whether or not this is sort of making a base after this engulfing candle, or whether or not it's just a short term base. If you put your fib extension on again. So it dictates around that 161.8% level, uh, and it didn't break the base. Okay, so wave one, wave two, wave three. So, uh, um, so it's got potential to move lower towards this uh, this channel base, towards sort of 122.30 odd. But then I think anywhere from here to here is uh, it's got some decent bullish potential. The risk reward on that trade would be very good indeed. If we break this high, then this is the start of the next wave up. Um, it's not a corrective sequence anymore. I'm bullish on Swiss pairs, is what I'll say. I'm not sure about dollar Swiss at the moment. Sterling Swiss, Euro Swiss, especially Euro Swiss, I think, uh, I think higher from here. Euro Swiss hit 127%. It's come down. It's just supported as well by that Swiss National Bank intervention level of 120, the figure. Um, okay, just need to zoom in a bit. Just put the camera back on just in case. Um, I think that's just maybe a head and shoulders formation, maybe a pullback to 61.8%. But after that, after this correction uh, is finished, I think the bias is strongly, uh, strongly to the upside again. Okay, guys, uh, that's our hour up. Any questions um, with regards to the analysis, how we break it down, forecasts, Money management, etc. As I said, we've got a um, a discounted subscription at the moment, twenty five pound per month. If you want to get updated uh, chart analysis into your inbox, well, in, onto the platform by seven a.m. UK time. In fact, Maud is kind enough to just post you the link there, so that's great. Okay, any questions at all? I always just look to risk reward. If 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 um, I normally look for two to one, if I can get if I've got a, a reversal candle formation at a fib level, then I need it underneath that uh, underneath that 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 reversal. Or, or on top of that reversal candle formation, depending obviously if it's bullish or bearish. Um, and then you just need to calculate risk. Oh, sorry, calculate reward, because you know what your risk is. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming along. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be doing another webinar next week. Not quite sure what it is yet, but I'd better tell more soon. Otherwise, uh, I'll be in trouble. Um, 
Take care. Good luck with your training. And uh, I hope to speak to you all again soon. Okay, bye for now.